Hello, I'm Elizabeth with the Newport Historical Society, and today we are speaking with Stacy Booth, who is a food waste historian and maintains the blog Forgotten-Recipes.com. Stacy is going to speak with us about the colonial technique of churning butter. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about churning butter, or um, really important food waste thing that happened in the 18th century, uh, especially not only just for food in your household, but also as a product to sell um, as a commodity. Um, most pe people in New England in the 18th century had a dairy cow or several dairy cows. And so this would be something that every family would be doing. And I have um, my butter churn right here. Now, if you don't have an authentic historic butter churn, no worries. You can actually get a um, one of the ball jars or a jar when you get a marble, put some whipping cream in it, have your Children shake it around because they can get some energy out that way. Um, and that will do the same thing. But for our sake, usually they have a smaller vessel, either a stoneware or a cooper like this, larger vessels. Um, it really depended on the amount of cattle you had. And um, really the cream that you're getting comes from the top. So when they would get milk the cow, they would actually have large pans and they would skim the cream off the top. And that cream was what goes into making the butter. The rest of the milk is almost like a, a skim milk, you might say, is um, either given to children or given to the pigs. It's either or. Um, but for this situation, you just want the cream and you want the cream to be at room temperature. Um, the colder it is, the harder it is it's gonna actually to become the other. Now, this would be a very boring video if I continue to do this because it's going to take a little while, even though it's starting to come together already after just a minute. But when it does come together, you'll start hearing thunks and thumps, and you'll see here's the butter. Oh, start separating out. And then you have buttermilk on the bottom. That's the white stuff that you see. And that actually is buttermilk. You can use it to, I'll probably use this to make some uh, buttermilk biscuits this, this weekend. but um, use it for pancakes. Um, they would actually feed this to, for children to drink as a helpful drink. Um, I wouldn't suggest that though. It doesn't taste very good. But the next step to do is you gotta wash it. So you take your butter um, out of the buttermilk and putting it into a bigger bowl. Now you can do this in a bowl and put it over the sink and just put the cold tap on and you'll be washing out the buttermilk. That's what actually will make the butter go rancid. So I'm just pouring some water, cold water into this bowl. And then I'm going to literally just massage the butter. And what you're doing is making sure the buttermilk gets rinsed out of the butter. And this Eliza Smith of um, The Complete Housewife, 1728, she says about three or four washes will probably do it. But really what you're looking for is for the water to be clear. Um, this and it's kind of hard to see, but it's a little murky right now. It looks like you are washing out the butter. So probably I'll have to do this about three or four more times um, before I get the full butter. And then once I'm done, there it is. That's the butter when it's all rinsed out. At this point, um, it's the time when you salt it. Now, in colonial period, if you're salting it for a long period of time, you'd actually salt it, put it in a cask, and salt it again because um, the salt is what going to keep it. Also, they would keep their um, dairy in cool places. That would help for the, the preserving process. But here I am just going to add a little more salt to taste than anything right now. And then I'm going to take my butter paddles. And you can kind of see right there, there are little ridges. It's actually meant to work the butter. So what you do is massage the salt into the butter. And then you take it and put it on a paddle. And you're not, don't whack it, but definitely gonna kind of give it a, a pat. And what this does is work the salt in, but also will give it a little better texture, lighter texture. Um, depending on time of year, springtime is really good for butter because the, the milk that the cows are giving is very rich and cream, but it also is fluffier and less gritty than say the winter when they're eating a lot of grains. So this helps to make the butter much more palatable. But you know, as you see, I'm not whacking it. But then I made a pat of butter. And if you have a butter press, you can put it in there or you can just put it in a ramekin. It's not, you don't have to be fancy fancy with it. 
And then I have my pot of butter and you want this to sit for at least 24 hours. Um, it is an inclination, you can eat it now, it's edible, but it's gonna be very salty. Um, you need time for the salt to work into the butter, make it sweeter, um, allow it to kind of all the flavors to start working out. And then just, I put it in a container, put it in the fridge and then have it on the biscuits that you're gonna make with the, the, the um, buttermilk. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing that insight. And if you are feeling the quarantine boredom, visit newporthistory.org and shopnewporthistory.com.